permission to turn this on now. Good morning. Yeah, do what you need. If you turn it on now, then in 10 minutes when someone turns it off. One, two. One, two.
they can see me. They do, so I can do uh, the Dory. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be more somber, but they do. Really? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then Thursday night, so that's Thursday night, so that's another role. But tonight also, like, what's going on for me in Thursday night? Which is harder, but my brother is in from where he lives in the Alpha is divorced, so it's his ex wife and daughter. But so it's like, he's a bad thing. So the first time she comes in, we get together, do this, and we have to go around with some candlelight and Spending some time with her. Kids, so tonight, I don't know what time you're back, but tonight is definitely an option. I just don't know what time you're available. I'm pretty much available. What time do you want to sleep? 11? I wake up my alarm rings at 3 30. Right. So I don't know. It's a bit of an hour. I don't care. You know? yeah. <coughs> I want to get one of my So let's do it. Let's try it. We spawn out some kids. What do you do right after, the, after this? Oh, no, it's, not, it's not right at me. Um, probably it's going to be for us. So I have to want to watch the kids. You either watch them or send them off to the to, 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 to age of eight. eight. I have to do that. It's a lot more replacement. I try it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not a different age. And then you off my kids. The youngest is 15. <laughs> right. Can, can she go and watch my kids? Did he? Did he? Did he? Can he? Can she go? Uh, all right, he has an excuse. The next one after that, she's 21. And you don't have a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As soon as you said that, I don't care. What happened? I went through my family, but I was going to be able to watch it. Well, I'll try to catch up, yeah. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, you're wearing everything on It's really good. Really, I don't know. So it's really good. I don't know. I do yeah, I'm talking about it. Oh, oh, yeah. so whether it's a double lock. Yeah, yeah. my hug is whether it's a double lock. Yeah, she was shouting. I thought you were talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Who holds the double lock? Yeah, yeah. My heart rate's going to be high. Is that much? Are you running? I'll go on the gym. It's all hard. 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 Yeah, interesting. All the high intensity. Oh, high intensity. Oh, wait, you high intensity. Right. What's that yeah. new uh, treadmill method? Bike Peloton. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like Peloton. Yeah. yeah. It has, but it, it's but tread. It's not meant to help, but it is from Peloton. How can I was in, I was in, uh, was one of the more people. It was last year this time. Actually, I was still mm-hmm. in that. I was in that. I didn't even know what it was. It was a subscription. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's like the bike. $39 a month. Yeah, but the bike itself, it yeah. lost like over $2,000. Yeah. So you don't know oh, oh, yeah, so right, and now they have the trail. Yeah, the trail also follows the, the part time trail <laughs> to make it like fancy. Mm-hmm. Part time trail. We go to the I have it. I have it. Yeah. You get the same class. So I have, I have to, uh, you don't need right, but the, the actual part time has a screen. I can't just about the screen. I, right. I walk up to uh, yeah. yeah. that. I walk up yeah. everything. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Instead, I don't know why I'm saying that I have a sufficient thing. You got like 10 different users. Oh, so yeah. it is last year. Yeah, you can try to call users on it. So you can see something out there. Yeah, but I think in this case, we use much as monitoring. I don't have any money back. I don't know if it's a reason. 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 It
I have a three months. Or people come across you in Yeah. Uh, Neil. Yeah, he's saying, don't Uh, 
because it's a double yabe the point of shlom is on the bar you don't even have the issue I mean they're a hybrid he brings them all the time he brings them all the time he brings them all the time good morning
Okay, let's see who's going to be around. Who's going to be around? Okay. Never tried that live show before. It's really long. <laughs> So let's um let's quickly review the column that we've established and then continue on to some very halakhalamaisa type of questions. We already established that when it comes to the Malach of Bishal. There is a principle of Ein Bishel Acher Bishel. Therefore, we said when it comes to a Dover Yavish, something which is a dry food, Ein Bishel Acher Bishel, you could therefore reheat or recook. It's not considered to be cooking. That's by Dover Yavish. When it came to Dover Lach, so there was a Machoikes amongst the Rishayim, which turns into a Machoikes amongst the Paiskim. The Mechaber says even when it comes to Dover Lach, when it, the Chaber says, when it comes to Dabr Lach, there is Bishel Achar Bishel. And therefore, once the Dabr Lach has cooled off, so then if you would heat it up again, that would be a violation of Bishel. Yesh Bishel Achar Bishel but Dabr Lach. The Ramah was not as convinced. The Ramah said that even when it comes to Dabr Lach, there are many Rishonim that say, Ein Bishel Achar Bishel. 
And since there are Rishonim that hold Ein Bishaf Rabishul, and it sounds like conceptually the Ramah is understand such a thing better. Therefore, the Ramah is machmer like the Shulchan Aruch, but he's willing to say as long as it is not bin nitzdamin legamre, it hasn't completely called off. So then you could reheat it. It's not a problem of bishul acher bishul. So according to the Ramah, a davrelach. It depends whether it's nitzdamin legamre. If it has yet to be nitzdamin legamre, so then ein bishul acher bishul. We pointed out that in a klirishon, everyone agrees that there is bishul yesh bishul bekli rishon. We point out that Iri Kli Rishon has a din of Kli Rishon that it is Mivashel, at least Kidei Klipa. And therefore, not only to put into a Kli Rishon would be Aser, but even to pour from a Kli Rishon onto something which was not, which has yet to be cooked. So that would be a violation of Bishel. Then we came to Kli Sheni. Kli Sheni was a big Machlaikis. And we passed in, and when it comes to Kli Sheni, Klisheni can be mevashel kalei habishol. We had a debate about exactly what kalei habishol is, mm-hmm. and therefore that was a big machlekes achreinen. But we seem to be machmer to assume that everything is considered kalei habishol unless it's one of the three clearly mentioned in the Gemara that is oil, water, and tavlin. Oil, water, and tavlin are not kalei habishol. Therefore, you could put them into klisheni. Everything else is kalei habishol, and therefore cannot be put. Into a kli, into a kli sheni. When it comes to a dover gush, we pointed out last week that even if it isn't a kli sheni, it might not have the halachas of a kli sheni because a kli sheni is defined by something which takes the shape of it of the kli. If the item is a dover gush, it maintains the heat within itself, and therefore it forever, until it becomes yat, not yatzal edisbo, it forever will maintain the status of a kli rishon, and therefore, just like you wouldn't be able to put something into a kli rishon, you wouldn't be able to put something on your hot potato or something of that nature. Kli shishi, we point out, kli shishi, we pointed out, is also a big machlekes, Rav Moshe was very makel when it comes to Klishishi, even though there are Rishonim that are very machmer when it comes to Klishishi. They say Klishishi has the same status as a Klisheni. Rav Moshe came and said that when it comes to Klishishi, he says, I can't imagine that it is Mivashal at all, and therefore one is allowed to be makel when it comes to a Klishishi. We did point out two major kulos, which is important to keep in mind. There are those that said, we pointed out, there are those that said that even though we are make, even though we are machmer when it comes to, even though we are machmer, even though we are machmer when it comes to yesh bishel acher bishel, even though we're machmir when it comes to yesh bishel acher bishel, when it comes to a dover lach, there are those that are makel in a cliche. So therefore, one has to be able to be able to balance and weigh the different situations. So therefore, if a person knows that we're machmir by dover lach, but and he knows we're machmir when it comes to cliche, so the mishabura did point out, as we will mention again in a few minutes, mishabura did point out. That those are willing to be makel that when those two kulas come together, but when those two chumras come together, you could be makel. Therefore, when the chumra of klisheni, which is a chumra, and we're assuming that things aren't of, aren't kale, are uh, something things are kale habishal, and that's a chumra of klisheni, and there's a cliche, there's a chumra of davralach that there is a that there is bishal acher bishal. So those two chumras come together, the Mishabura says one does not have to be machmer, a klisheni, by something which is cooked already, even a davrlach, where we normally, by davrlach, which is cooked already, where we would normally be machmer, the Mishabura paskin, that you could be makel in a klisheni. <laughs> Shemen Zayis. We're assuming Shemen Zayis. Yeah. Oh, even, even if it's completely cold. What? 
Even if it's cold. Right, exactly. That's the extra that, the extra cooler that he's saying. In a cliche, you could be makeup. So let's just the chumrah of the Ramah of Yesh Bishal Acher Bishal Bidover Lach. Yesh Bishal Acher Bishal Bidover Lach. So we have one kula in a cliche that the Mishabura said, and then we had another kula on do you have to be machmi like the marshal of a Dover Gush? There are those that paskin that you don't have to be machmir like the marshal on a dover gush. And Mishabru disagreed with this, but Ramayusha was makeup. So a person always has to keep in mind. The Iker Adin, we know that Klisheni were machmir and Yesh Bishal Achar Bishal by Dover Lach were machmir. However, there is room to be lenient. There's room to be lenient in a Klisheni. And according to Ramayusha, there's even room to be lenient. When it comes to a when it comes to a davar <coughs> gush, even though a davar gush we pointed out has the status of a klirisha and because it maintains the heat, we pointed out that Ramayusha says even so a bishul achar bishul even when it comes to davar lach. I thought we passed in yesha achar bishul when it comes to davar lach. Yes, but we're not going to combine the chumra of Rama of yesh bishul achar bishul a davar lach. Together with the Chumrah of the Marshal, that all Dover Gush is considered to be a Kli Rishon. Again, you don't have to put a Chumrah on top of a Chumrah. And therefore, that's a Ramayusha was Mako. If a person has a hot potato, so a person has a hot potato, it maintains the heat. It's a Dover Gush according to the Marshal. And now you want to put on some sort of sauce, some sort of ketchup, which is already cooked. It's a Dover Lach. So, Dover Lach. We are Machmir, Yesh Bisho, Achar Bisho. But said Ramayusha, which Bura argued, Said Ramayusha, you don't have to be machmer for both chumras. You don't have to be machmer yesh bishul acher bishul when it comes to a davar lach. Together with the chumra of the marshal that a davar yavesh is like a klirisha, and therefore he allows you to be mekel. Mishabura says no, you do have to be machmer. Mishabura would agree that in klisheni you don't have to be machmer, but for the marshal you do have to be machmer. So the person just has to keep in mind the order, the seder hadvarim, to be able to make sure that you can make a proper judgment call. When it comes up, the principles you have, the principles are important. Machmer Dover by Klisheni or Machmer by Adover Lach. The question is, when these principles converge, is there any room to be Mako Bimbakam Ha Tsaira? So that was basically a review where we ended off with Klisheni being a big, big debate amongst the place game. Ramesha was Machmer, Rav, the Ramesha was Mako, the Rav Ya was Machmer, which brings us to the next conversation which again is a very important conversation, which we've all had to a certain degree, but um, let's try to learn it inside. And that is the discussion that we have to have when it comes to making tea and coffee on Shabbos and the appropriate way to do such a thing. So when it comes to tea, let's first discuss the tea the way that they used to make tea, and that is with regular tea leaves. So you regular the tea leaves, you pour hot water onto tea leaves, this seemingly would be a problem of Bishel. Even though one could argue that tea leaves are similar to Tavlin, how is a tea leaf different than a different leaf, which is created by, which is created, which is how you create Tavlin? So there it could be an argument made that tea leaves are in fact like Tavlin. And if tea leaves are like Tavlin, we know that it's not Kali Habishal, and therefore, it would be permitted to put into a cliche. That would be the most obvious solution. You're right, I'm not going to pour from a cliche onto my tea leaves, but could I put the tea leaves into a cliche? So you'll say, it depends on Kali Abishal. But tea leaves, are they like Tavlin? And they're not Kali Abishal, we're good to go. But many of the Pisces say that the way that tea leaves are cut, again, I don't know exactly the different uh, nuances and the different ways that they are cut, but the way Rabbi Shalom Zalman argues is that the way that tea leaves are cut, they're so thinly cut that they, in fact, could be considered Kali Habishal. And therefore, cliche in the case of a tea leaf, would not do the trick. There are those that argue that even if you want to consider tea leaves to be Tavlin, there would still be a problem, says the Ginas of Rodim in Maramakam number 43. Talking about tea and coffee. 
ואין אדוים לטבלין, שבו רק למתק משקה קיים. עוזר ליטנות בקלישייני משום מחסי כמבשר. ענו חומרה וגינס ברודם, ומשרבורו דוס סימפ תעדפטס אינסטרנט סנאריו, זה מה שאני מנשן את זה עכשיו, אבל זה זה, זה 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 But it's a minority over here. It's barely, it's just uh, here to enhance something else, a piece of meat or something of that nature. But when Tavlin becomes the Iker Sudo, when Tavlin becomes the Iker Michael rather, when Tavlin is the mainstay of the specific dish that I'm cooking, then it no longer has the status of Tavlin, but rather it retains the status, it retains the status of a regular food item. And therefore it has no kulos of Tavlin. So says the Gina's Rodham, even if you want to argue that tea leaves has the status of Tavlin, which again, according to Rishon Muzalman, it does not, and therefore it has a real problem of Bishel, but even if you want to argue that tea leaves does have the status of Tavlin, and I should be able to put them in my cliché because we know they are not Kaleha Bishel, says the Gina's Rodham, that's not the case. Why? Since it's the mainstay, it's not merely here just to enhance a piece of meat. This is what I'm having. I'm having coffee. I'm having tea. That is produced by these leaves. So therefore, they get the status of regular food. And therefore, there's at least the problem of mechzeik and mevashel. It looks like you're cooking when I put them into a kli chain. So therefore, we have a problem. I can't put the, I certainly can't pour water on my tea leaves. I certainly can't put water on my tea leaves. That's clear. Risha, there's nothing to talk about. I certainly, according to Rabbi Shlomo Zalman and his brother, most post him, I can't put my tea leaves even into Klisheni because there's going to be a problem of either Bishol Klisheni or there's going to be a problem of Mechse Kimivashel. So what do I do over here? I seem to be out of options. There is one caveat I should point out. Rabbi Shechter does point out from Rabbi Soloveitchik that they were Mako in the house of salvation, apparently, to make even in a cliché, they held that you don't have to be nervous, it's Mexican Mavashal, and they held it's, it's not, it's clearly not Kavle Avishal, like Tavlin, so they held there wasn't a problem. So there are a few, maybe one family in Kal Yisrael that they still make, uh, <laughs> they make tea, they make tea in a cliché, that Svara does exist, but for the prime, for most of Kal Yisrael, you can't make it a cliché, and you can't make in a cliche. So what are your options? Your options are like Ramesha. Ramesha says, I can't imagine anything could be created in a cliche. There is no cooking that could be done in a cliche. And therefore, that's why Ramesha was mako to cook in a cliche. It could cook in a cliche. And according to Ramesha, it's easy. I pour the water into a cliche from the urn. Then I pour from the cliche into a cliche. I put the tea leaves in there. I'm good to go. Everything, everything is okay. That's a heter of Ramesha. However, it's important to point out that Ramesha has not necessarily been accepted by all of Kali Yisrael. Many have accepted Ramesha, but if you go to Eretz Yisrael and you act like Ramesha, So they'll look at you basically like you're not Jewish. I've had that experience myself. I remember when I was in, there in Eretz Yisrael for yeshiva. So I was in an Israeli yeshiva. And uh, one of the first Shabbos, I started making tea or coffee. I don't remember what it was. In a cliche, they looked at me like, you're from Mars. What are you doing over here? Mamash being the Vashal on Shabbos. Cliche, who ever heard of cliche? Yes, in Eretz Yisrael, very few are make like Rav Maisha. Certainly in the world of the Chazanish, Chazanish argued, argued on Rav Maisha over here, and therefore they are certainly machmir. So let's say I don't want to be soimech on kli shlishi. What is the etza? What could I do for making tea and coffee on Shabbos? Kli is not going to work. Kli sheni is not going to work. And according to most poskim, kli shlishi is not going to work. So let's take a look at a very important Mishnah Brura. Before we read the Mishnah Brura, let's just go through outside what our options are. Right? So to put something raw in is going to be a problem, as we pointed out, because it's going to be mevushal, bein b'klirish, and bein b'klishemi, bein b'klishlishi. So the options over here are as follows. There is one option that the place can give, and that is to pre-cook the tea leaves or pre-cook the tea bag. That is to say, I put water, I cook it before, I pour water over it before Shabbos, 
I cook it, it's all cooked, and then I dry it off. I pour water on it, it's cooked, then I dry it off. What do I have now? I have a Dabr Yavish that was already Mavushal. Dabr Yavish was already Mavushal. Ain Bishal, Achar Bishal, I could stick it right back into my hot cup of hot water right on Shabbos because the two catches over here are that you have to be very certain that the entire thing was cooked. This became a big problem at some points in history. They were concerned that people were sticking it in to the tea before Shabbat, to the hot water before Shabbos. It wouldn't entirely cook. There would still be some leaves there that weren't cooked. They felt they were cooked because they poured hot water over it, but there's still some tea leaves that weren't cooked. And those tea leaves, when they put it back into Shabbos, on Shabbos, they put it back in the hot water, those tea leaves were being cooked. You're over at Malachas de Araisa, you're over at Isser de Araisa. So first off, if a person uses this Eitza, you have to be very certain that the entire bag, the entire group of tea leaves is in fact cooked. You have to leave it there, make sure that it's absorbed by the entire bag, it's cooked. And secondly, you have to make sure that you dry it off very well. Because if you don't dry it off very well, then this is not considered to be only a Dover Yavesh, which we would say in Bishal Achar Bishal. But now you have a Dover Lach in there as well. And when it comes to a Dover Lach, we say Yesh Bishal Achar Bishal. So if a person wants to use this Eitza of pre-cooking the tea leaves or the tea bag, he has to be very sure, first of all, that it's entirely cooked before Shabbos. And then he has to be very certain that he's drying it off prior to Shabbos so that when he sticks it back in, there isn't going to be a problem of Bishal Achar Bishal with a Dover Lach. And for these reasons, the Mishnah Brura gives an entirely different um, way out. According to Mishabru, you'd be able to. According to Mishabru, you'd be able to. What? According to Mishabru, we you could be mitzarif klisheni together with the Ramaz Kula of Ein Bishalach or Bishal by Davlach, even if it's a sound. But that would be this would be, would be much more lechatchila, right? Because Mishabru wasn't so posh. But according to Mishabru, but the Eved, yes, you would be able to do that. What's considered drying at all? That is not wet anymore. Well, what? Hours. So that's a problem. That's why, why, is, why is it different than a piece of meat? The W still has a lot more clear to it. Doesn't the dog dry it off and you pour off all the liquid? It still has a wetness to it. A piece of meat also still Yeah, has. so I guess you're right. To that extent that it, it maintains some sort of wetness would be okay. But any droplets of water would be a, would be a problem. No water liquid. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, so the Mishabura comes... And gives a different etza, which has been used in Jewish homes for many generations. And that is to make tea essence. Before Shabbos, a person makes a concentrate of tea prior to Shabbos. And therefore, what's he doing? He's being mevashal the tea before Shabbos. Now I have a dover lach, which is mevashal before Shabbos. And I'm going to pour that dover lach into what? If I pour it into a klisheni, then I'm being mako like the mishabura again. If I pour it into a klisheni, that means I'm being mitzvah. If really it's a dover lach. If it's entirely cooled off, so a dover lach that's entirely cooled off, we say, yesh bishel acher bishel. So why am I allowed to pour it into klisheni? So the mishabura gave us a kula before. So those that disagree, but there's a kula by dover lach, even if it's in stein the gamre, if it was already cooked, you could put it into a clean shady. But that's using the kula of Mishabura. Let's say one does not want to use the kula of Mishabura. So then either one of two options. You could either keep the tea essence not nitzani the gamre entirely, keep it in an area where it will maintain its warmth, even next to the urn, let's say, it very likely will maintain its warmth. Then I don't have a problem with stani the gamre. I don't have a problem at all. Ain't bishalach or bishalach or perhaps we could say that you could be makel, even if I'm not going to be makel like the Mishabura for a cliche by a Dover Lach, which was already most Bilshot. But maybe over here, I'm willing to rely on Ramesh and say by a cliche, I don't have a concern, and therefore I could pour the tea essence into the Kli Shlishi. So that is the suggestion of the Mishabura to make tea essence before, either keep a certain amount of warmth. Or put it into a cliche in the Mishaburah's makeup. We would say, even if you want to be Saimech on the Mishaburah, add another Kula on and say, you'll be Makeler Gemaisha. You don't want to be Saimech on Ramaisha to say, Kli Shlishi's Mamash, not Mavasha. 
But when it comes to a Dover Lach, which is already a Kula, the Ramah says you could really be made by Dover Lach. And we're only being machmir because it's the son of the Gamre. So the Mishabru says I can even put it into Klishani. Comes the Ramaisha would say that by Klishisha I can mamish put it in raw. So we would say Gavaldix over here, you could be Mitzarik, the cool of Ramaisha. Together with the cool of Mishabura, you could put the T essence into Dover into a Klishlishi Lichule. Alma. So this takes care, I'll take questions in a moment. This takes care of the T itself. The T itself, this is how I created T, the T essence. Let's say I want to put some milk into my T. I want to put some milk into my T. So my T is in a Klishlishi. Let's talk about Klishen. The T is in my Klisheni, right? I made it Alpida Derek of the I put the T essence into my hot cup of water. Again, Rabbi Isai, be sure that you put the tea essence in after the water is there, especially if you're doing cliche If you're doing cliche you put the tea essence in first and then you pour from the urn, you just did irikli risha, and that could be a real, real serious issue. So first you have to put the hot water in. Now it's already a cliche Once it's a cliche I could take my Dover Lach, which is already mavushal, namely the tea essence, I can pour it into the cliche and the Mishabura will be mako. Am I allowed to put milk into it now. So has milk been cooked before or not? That is a debate amongst the Paiskin. Milk has certainly been pasteurized. Whether that satisfies the requirements of Bishel is a major debate amongst the Paiskin, which plays a major role, more importantly to many of us, more important than our Bishel on, uh, on, on milk is our Bishel on wine. Has the wine been pasteurized? If the wine has been pasteurized, is the wine considered to be yayin mevushal? You'll notice that a lot of wines which have in America, right, yayin mevushal, in Eretz Yisrael, don't write yayin mevushal, even though it's the same wine. How could that be? Because the standards for many of the organization in America are different than the organizations in Eretz Yisrael. Many of the organizations in America rely on the poiskim that say, that the pasteurization process is in fact enough to be mevashal, therefore it's considered to be yayin mevushal. Whereas in Eretz Yisrael, many of the place can hold that that has not reached, that temperature has not reached the threshold of mevushal, and therefore it's not yayin mevushal. In a similar vein, when it comes to the pasteurization of milk, there are Paiskim that say that's already Mivoshal. It's already Mivoshal. There's no difference between the milk and the tea essence. And if I'm going to be making like the Mishabura to put a double lash and it's not the Gamre into Klisheni with my tea essence, I could be Makil when it comes to the milk as well. If I'm going to be Machmer to do into Klishlishi when it comes to the tea essence, so then I'll be Machmer when it comes to the milk to do the same thing. It has the same halacha according to these Paiskim. The milk has the same halacha. As the tea essence itself, it's basically a double lach, shenis basho, shenit stanen le gamre. Good. How comes Rav Yashiv and says the pasteurization process? And Rav Yashiv is just representative of a lot of the Eretz Yisrael Paiskim. But he says that it's not high enough. The temperature is not high enough. It's not considered to be mevushal beforehand. So if it's not considered to be mevushal beforehand, so what do we do? How am I allowed to pour milk into my tea or my coffee? Making coffee itself, we'll get to in a minute. But just discussing the, the milk for a moment. So Rav Yashiv, in fact, says that it is going to be a problem. A person's not able to put it into his Kli Shani. Rav Yashiv apparently was Mako to allow people to do it into Kli Shlishi. Meaning he wasn't going to come with his Chumrah and say pasteurization is not enough to be Mavushal. When it comes to a klishlishi, apparently he was made So another mile of doing it our way, of putting the essence not into klisheni, but putting it into a klishlishi, is that then, according to Rav Yashiv, even though the milk before, prior, according, it very likely will not have been the bushel because pasteurization is not enough, he will be made and allow me to put in klisheni because there are many places going to say pasteurization is enough. And Klishlishi, many places here in Moshe, says that there's no problem of Bishel. However, Rabbi Yashif himself, I don't know if he writes this himself, but the Tommy the Rabbi Yashif say that you, they, in, their, in their house, the Yashalmi's house, they are makbid to cook the milk entirely before. They're not soimif on any of this because they're machmir that it's a problem in a Klishani, a problem in a Klishlishi. The pasteurization is not enough. 
So you could go home and tell your wives that before Shabbos, we're going to start cooking up uh, a kettle. That'll be the last uh, shear you'll have to come to. We're going to cook up, you cook up uh, a kettle of uh, milk before. That's what Rabbi Yashiv did. But uh, again, there is what to be soymichan. Certainly in America, we're soymich all the time that pasteurization has reached the uh, the stage, and therefore it's good to go. Let's learn inside the Mishabura, a very important Mishabura, how he describes this. Take a look at Mishabura Sifkot and Lamites. And again, this is a Mishabura where we can't read the entire thing, but certainly worthwhile for everyone to go back over it and to, to learn it inside. It says the Mishabura and Sifkot and Lamites. The also is talking about tea leaves. The also is shreisai. The the also is shreisai. I feel the cliche. Ne, skip down two lines. The atar nevaer din bishul alei hatei hashayach bekama in yonim lisiv ze. Says in Mishabura, I'm going to discuss the proper way on making tea. Tea. He ne tea bishabes poshiv bepoiskim. The yesh bo mishum bishul. There's a bishul. Right, the Mishabura Chavetz Chaim always has to begin by telling you, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, you're going to be Chayv Skila. So listen carefully. Remember, the Chavetz Chaim spent a large portion of his life traveling around. He was a guest in many people's homes. When he says that he sees a lot of people be Nirshal in certain things, he's talking from experience. He sees what people are doing on Shabbos. This person offered him tea, at his achsanya offered him tea on Shabbos. He saw how they made the tea. He says, <laughs> Normally I just explain the Shulchan Aruch. Here I'm going to give you A, B, C, exactly how the appropriate way to do it. <laughs> to pour from a klirish and direct from the kettle. Al al or from the urn al al yati yesh bze bevadech shash av melacha as we all know dekai malon iri mevashal kadek lipa right so it's simple we set up the rules before klirishon is mevashal iri klirishon is mevashal kadek klamon besif yud v'kol shekain im yam denu acher kach al hatanur oy v'tan v'toycha kach in different types of oven ad she yad soledes but bevade yavul chuli amuli de iser skila deze. So let's say I want to put it into a kli sheni. So I pour the cup, I pour water in from the urn into a kli, it's in a kli sheni. And now I want to put the tea leaves into kli sheni. What do you say, Rabbi Isai? Says the Mishabura, Kideshi ye alamayim shem kli sheni. Gam kein oser, dekai melam besivze, de dover shaloi ba bechamel if ne shabbos, in shirin. There are things which cook even if you pour out those little fish. Remember those fish? The, even from Ire Klisheni is going to be cooked. So says, says the Mishabura, certainly in a Klisheni Mamish, you have to be concerned that the tea leaves are going to be Mavosho. Says What's the appropriate way to do it? Pour on before Shabbos. So that you cooked it already. And stirred around a little. Hate it. Make sure the hot water gets all over the place. Skip the bracket. So you make this tea concentrate, the essence, and you put the essence into a different kidli. So that now the, the, the tea leaves are entirely dry. Once they're dry, I could pour hot water on them. Since they've already been cooked, when it comes to the even if it became 100% cold. So the eight of that the Mishabura first gives is to pre-cook these tea leaves before Shabbos, 
drive him off. Dover Yavesh, which is already mevushal, I could put back into hot water. Ain bishal achar bishal. The achar kach says the mishabura muter loy lahachzir gam meha essence elu hatsoinenim lisoicha klizet. He says, or if you don't want to pour the hot water on the tea leaves, which you're allowed to do if they're completely dry, you could even put the tea essence back into the into the hot water. Why? You could put into a klisheni reseach because Meshavura is meko to say that a davar lach which is nistanin even if it's nistanin legamre even though we're machmir by a davar lach yesh bishach or bishol it's only klisheni says Meshavura you could be meko when it comes to a klisheni. Okay. So the Mishabura says the same thing for coffee. We will get to coffee. We'll get to coffee in a moment. But the, and the, the Kedai, it's worthwhile reading the rest of the Mishabura on your own. But that's enough that we've seen together for now. The Mishabura gave the two Eitzas that we saw. Again, the Mishabura speaks about these Eitzas in the realm of a Kli Shani. I would just argue it doesn't hurt us to be Machber one step further and go into a Kli Shlishi. First of all, if the leaves haven't been cooked off entirely, then you cooked entirely, then you have what to be Makal on, Ramayisha. If you haven't dried it off entirely, you have what to be Makal on, Ramayisha. It's a safety net. Even if you don't want to be Semech or Ramayisha, if you put something in Kli Shlishi, you know you always have Ramayisha that it's not going to be me vasha, and therefore, if you're doing it either with bishalach or bishal or with tea essence, I would say if it's okay, if you can, a person should try to be machmer for a person should try to be machmer for for um, to put everything into klishlishi. This way, you know that you have no concerns. There are many other issues when it comes to tea, which we will read about, which we will discuss shortly. But we have to make one other. We have to make one other point before we get to before we get to the coffee discussion and the remainder and the remainder of the tea discussion. That discussion. Has, the urn. That's, not, that's a klirishan. The urn's a klirishan ala klirishan ala ish. But if the cup is a cliche, even if it's klirishan ala ish. It still creates a cliche. It doesn't make it one step further of a clearition. So clearition and clearition on that age have the same status, and anything that comes from them becomes <laughs> a cliche. So let's take a moment now to point out something else which will help us in this discussion of tea and coffee. And again, we're going to come back to many of the other issues which uh, relate to tea and coffee. First, we want to discuss tea and coffee with Mitzara Bishel. Once we figure out the right way to do tea, co- tea and coffee with Mitzara Bishel, then we could discuss the other halachic issues of Bayer and Sivay, all these other things, how to do it properly. But Ti Mitzara Bishel, we pointed out the best way to do it is a Klishlishi, not directly Klishlishi, but Klishlishi, where you're being Soimech on Bishel Achar Bishel, either because I pre cooked the tea leaves or I created essence before and therefore I have a Dabalach, which is Mevoshel. Okay, what do they do? What? There's a swell, so they're, they're not holding. From, from, from Klishlishi, are they? They're all from Klishlishi, but together with all these Tzirufim of Bishol and Bishol, they'll be Saimachan. Like Rav Yoshev himself will say Saimachan, yeah. As long as it's Mavushal before, they do Essence, like Mishru, yeah. So you're talking about our tea bags. Leave your essence on the fire. Our tea bags, yeah, yeah. Now there are, what? You leave your essence on the fire, but you keep on Shabbos, you have to do no, then it's uh, then it's already cooked. Yeah, so, so. Okay, let's go a little weiter. Rabbi say a very important Gemara in the Seches Psachem. The Gemara tells us in the Seches Psachem, not in the context of Shabbos at all, but it will be used by many Paiskim in the context of, tza- of, of Shabbos. The Gemara tells us, this again is a small snippet from a large Gemara. It's worthwhile taking a look at the Gemara itself. The Gemara is discussing... Different ways of being yoytze, the mitzvah of matzah. What could I use to be yoytze matzah? What am I not allowed to be used to be mekayim my chiv of matzah? And the Gemara tells us as follows. Marmalkum 45. Rabbi Yoysi Oimer, 
A person takes a matzah and is dips it in water, so that is still he's able to be mikhaim his mitzvah of matzah with that. But if he cooks the matzah, the matzah is already baked. And then he takes the million dollar matzah that you spent so much money on, and for some reason you decide to make matzah dry before the seder, and now it's all cooked. And you want to be yoytze your chiyuv of matzah. This is nagei Allah lemaisa because. People are people that can't chew, can't eat, swallow that much unless it's wet. So if it's sharoi in water, so the Gemara says it's okay. But if you cook the matzah beforehand, that is a problem. It no longer can be used to be mekayim echiv of matzah. Says Rashi, why? What's wrong with cooking the matzah after, of course, gabrox? Forget about it. But Rashi wasn't nervous about gabrox. But says Rashi, why? Says the Gemara, says Rashi, avaloi bimbevosho, delav lechem karinun bay. We no longer consider it to be lechem. Of course, matzah has to be lechem oini. It's no longer considered to be lechem. Even though it's baked, and the definition of lechem is something which is baked. In the oven, since you came back and you cooked it, bitlu mi toiras lechem. You mevatel the shame lechem from it. And the Gemara is even really more explicit. The Gemara says in a few different places that you're actually taking away. It no longer has tam of lechem. It no longer tastes like lechem because once you, what is definitional to lechem is that it was baked and tastes like something that was baked. Once you come and you cook the item, it no longer tastes like a baked item. It takes away the taste of a baked item. And instead of tasting baked, it tastes cooked, and it has the tam bishel. This would indicate to the tour, comes the tour and says, what do you see? You see that cooking something, even if it was already baked, is enhancing the item in an entirely different way. There are many ways of cooking something. There's a way of cooking through water. There's a way of cooking through on the grill. There's a way of cooking, um, uh, there's a way of baking. There's many different ways of cooking. So each way of cooking enhances, gives a different tam to the food, and therefore enhances the food in a different way. And each one is considered to be the malach of bishop. So just because I did a fia to this item, and therefore it's royal achila, and it's considered a cooked item, it's cooked, it's considered cooked b'derech achila. If I go back and now I'm and so I'm doing something entirely different. I'm being mevashal on Shabbos. The fact that it was edible because it was nefa beforehand according to the tour, is meaningless. And therefore, the tour would say, Yesh Bishol Achar Afiya, V'yesh Afiya Achar Bishol. Both of them. Yesh Tzli Achar Afiya, Yesh Afiya Achar Tzli, Yesh Bishol Achar Tzli. Every different type of food, every different type of cooking, you have to know. Was this specific oifen of cooking done to this food? If the answer is yes, then I could do it again. Ain't Bishol Achar Bishol, Ain't Tzli Achar Tzli, Ain't Afiya Achar Afiya. But that's only if you're repeating that which was done. But if you're not repeating that which was done, you're doing a different method. So then, says the tour, just like the Gemara tells us in Psachim, it tastes totally different. Now you gave it Tam Bishol, you were over the Isra of Bishol on Shabbos. That is the halacha that the tour stipulates. And therefore, Yesh Bishol Achar Afiya, Yesh Afiya Achar Bishol. Comes the Rav Yob, come many of the Rishayinim and say, absolutely not. What is the principle of Ein Bishel Achar Bishel? What's the principle of Ein Bishel Achar Bishel? The principle of Ein Bishel Achar Bishel is, it's a Lamdash and a What's the principle of Ein Bishel Achar Bishel? The principle is that once I've cooked an item and made it ready to serve, I made it ready to eat, I prepared the food, the Isra of Bishel is about preparing the food preparing an item that wasn't right to be eaten or wasn't right to be served, and now I made it ra'oi. That is the definition of bishel. So if it was ra'oi b'derech afiyah, but not b'derech bishel, at the end of the day, it's ra'oi. It's no longer a raw food, and therefore, whatever I do to it, it does not have the shame bishel. It's already a prepared food. The yisoyed of ain bishel achar bishel is not that additional bishel does nothing, but the Yisoyed is that a Bishel Bishel is not, is not, doesn't have the significance of Bishel because the food is already Mevushel. So do I care if it's already Mevushel with Derech Afiyah or with Derech Tzli? At the end of the day, this food is already prepared. So the question that we're discussing, Rabbi, is what is the Lambdas of Ein Bishel Achar Bishel? 
if the lamnus of ain bishul achar bishul is that the yisoid of bishul is to take a food which is raw and to create a food out of it, and therefore, when I already created a food out of it to do more bishul, I'm simply not doing bishul because something which is cooked cannot be cooked again. So then you would say ain't bishul achar bishul. You would say ain't bishul achar fia. You ain't bishul achar tzi. Because basically, what does ain't bishul achar bishul mean? That a food that has already gone through a process, has already been prepared, is already cooked, and any oifin, it's already ready. You can't cook anymore because. The chashivas of the malacha of Bishul is to take in a food from a state of being raw to a state of being cooked. You're taking it from the state of being baked. You can't make it cooked anymore. You're not over there so Bishul. But if ein Bishul Acha Bishul means that the reason ein Bishul Acha Bishul is because since I already did Bishul to it, I'm not enhancing it whatsoever. I'm not doing anything significant at all. I'm not changing the taste at all with more Bishul. I already did Bishul. That's only true if you do the same exact thing, if I already did Bishul with water, and now I do Bishul with water again, I'm not doing anything. But if I already did Afiya, I baked it, and now I'm cooking it, I'm changing it very significantly. I'm doing something tremendous to it. I'm changing the taste entirely, and therefore we would say, Yesh Bishul Achar Afiya. So this is the machlekes between the tour and the Raviyah. How to understand the Yisoyed of Ein Bishol Achar Bishol. And based on how to understand the Yisoyed of Ein Bishol Achar Bishol, they have a major nafkamina. Do we say, Yesh Bishol Achar Afiya, Yesh Afiya Achar Bishol, or do we say, Ein Bishol Achar Afiya, Ein Bishol Achar, Ein Afiya Achar Bishol. The question is, the question is, what they did in the Mishkan, why is it chashiv? They did cooking in the Mishkan. Is that chashiv because it was taking something raw and turning it into something cooked? Or was it chashiv because it was giving tam bish? So depending on how you define the malacha, that will decide over here. You're right, they didn't do it in the Mishkan. But the question is, what was chashiv about what they did in the Mishkan? And does that apply over here? So let's take a look at the Mechaber. says the Mechaber in Sif, hey. Says the Mechaber in Sifet, Yesh Misha Oimer. There is someone who says, the Dabr Shanefa, something which is baked, Oy Nitzla, something which is roasted. In Bishlai Acher Kach Bimashka, if you cook it after, afterwards in water, Yesh by Mishom Bishol, there is Bishol, the tour. The Osir Litein Pass, Afilu Bikhlishen Nisha Yasaledishbo, the Yesh Matirin. The Mechaber is bringing both down for us. There are those that say, like the tour, Yesh bishol achar and there are those that say like the Rav ain bishol achar And then he says both shitas, major nafkamina. Am I allowed to take my chala and dip it into my soup bowl? Am I allowed to take my croutons maybe and put it into my soup? My chala was baked; it was not cooked, right? My chala was baked. I put it now into my soup bowl, assuming my soup bowl is a cliche. I'm now putting something which has not yet been mivushal. Into a cliche, I'm being nevashal on Shabbos. I'm being nevashal on Shabbos. Major nafkamina. Machloikis, two days in the Mechaber. Zok de Ramah, says Ramah, Hagot, the cliche, the yesh makilin, a filu the clirisha. The noguli zor lichat chilo, shaloi lita in pass, a filu the cliche, kozman shahayad saledis bow, says Ramah. A machmir lechatchila, not to put something which was baked beforehand and not cooked, even into cliche. You have to be chayshesh. It's kalei habishol. You have to be chayshesh. It's kalei habishol. I can put into cliche. I'm violating an iser daraisa. I'm being mivashel on Shabbos. That is how the Rama passing. So whereas the mechaber has two days, and there are many poskim. If you take a look at the at the at the Ribavadya, he does argue that there are many place game hold that the Mechaber is in fact Mechel. But for 99% of us, that does nothing. Because the Ramah is Machmer, and therefore one has to be Chayshesh, that Yesh Bishol Achar Afir. Now when it comes to the croutons, there is what to be Saimachan. Because how are the croutons made? So most of the croutons we use, you have to be careful. Not all croutons are the same. But most of the croutons, certainly the yellow ones, are deep fried. If they're deep fried, so that is not considered to be tzli. That is not considered to be tigun. That halachically is considered to be cooking. 
just in today's day and age, who could, would cook with water if you could cook with oil, right? So you're cooking instead of with water, you're cooking with oil. They're deep fried, they're totally submerged in oil. So that is a cooking process. Since they've already been through the cooking process, come the Paiskim and say, that's not Bishal Achar Afia. That is Bishal Achar Bishal. And therefore the croutons would be okay. But to dip challah into a cliche, sounds like we'd mamish be machmer. Comes to Shmir Shabbos, Mar 47. Says the Shmir Shabbos, the point that we just made. Says the Shmir Shabbos, Shkede Morak, soup nuts. Oi itri, oi smitugona, is bishemen. Hanim koris kishehein muchona is lachila. Mutil ose se son afilu bikli rishay. Im eno oimer agabe ish. You could even put in cliche. Ki hatigon. Biriboy shemen, not stam frying, but frying in deep fry, biriboy shemen, nech shavu bishel, it's totally submerged in the oil, and therefore it's considered to be bishel. The ain iser bishel, achar bishel. So the croutons we have a kula for it because it's mevushel, but when it comes to the chava, this is going to be a real issue because yesh bishel, achar afia. The chala is baked. Now you're dipping it into your bowl, which we will assume is only a kli sheni, even if it's a kli shlishi, many places are machmer against Ramesha, and you're cooking that which was baked before. You're being mevashal on Shabbos. What about taking, what about taking a, what about taking a challah and putting it on the plata, putting it on the blech on Shabbos? So the challah was baked. Now what are you doing now? You're warming it up. What's it called? Halachically, I'm putting it on the fire. Bishel's with water. What? Bishel's only with water. Bishel's only with water. What's it called now when I'm putting the fire? When I'm putting it on the fire? Afia? No, oh, it's Lee. It's Lee. It's Lee. Right? When you put something on the fire, yeah, that's what you're directly on the fire. It's Lee. The difference between Afia and Slee. Slee is on top of the fire. Afia is in an oven which is encased together with the fire. Comes from Shomel Zalman in Marmokum 48, Chumra of the day. Says from Shomel Zalman. Ubetihil <laughs> So Rav Shlomo Zalman himself seems to go back and forth. If you look at Rav Shlomo Zalman prior to what they cut out over here, Rav Shlomo Zalman himself is not 100% at all convinced. Rav Shlomo Zalman seems to be machmir like the Ramah, if you actually look in Shemir Shabbos itself, that a person should not put chala directly on the fire. That would be an iser of tzli achar bishel. Comes the chazanish and points out that, no, it's okay, you could be meiko, because it's not really considered to be tzli achar bishel unless it gives it the tam of tzli. There's a different tam of tzli when you grill on an open fire. But over here, there's no open fire. It therefore, it doesn't give the taste of anything which is grilled. And therefore, it's not considered to be a violation of Tzli Achar Bishel because it's not going to give it any separate time. But it is a big machlekes hapaiskim. Rosh Hashanah, again, seems to be Mako. Rosh Hashanah seems to be Machmer. The Chazanish seems to be Mako. And it all comes down to this Yisoy. The Lamaisa, the Chala was only baked. And Yesh Tzli... Achar Bishel. The question now becomes... What? You're putting it on top of the fire? The top of the fire? It's still a It still disperses the heat. It's different than actual tzli. It's like a pan. Yeah. Tzli, that's what we call tzli keder. Tzli keder. Yeah. But it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not being baked. It's something else other than baked. Yeah. Lots of real cool. what? croutons are made of bread. That's what I said. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful how the croutons are made. Usually the le- yellow ones are cooked before, or deep fried before. Okay, so let's go a little weiter. So this is all assuming the, that I, like the Ramah, one has to be machmer, that yesh, bishel, achar, fia, and therefore you can't put any of these things even into a kli shady. There is another sad law. Okay. 
the other tzad lahoko, which many of you I'm sure are familiar with, that is the kula of the ladle. The kula of the ladle. That is, how do I judge the soup bowl, which is actually right in front of me? My wife brings me a bowl of soup. Someone brings me a bowl of soup. So what is the status of the soup? It's piping hot. That's certainly it's piping hot. So is it a clearition? No, it wasn't on the fire, right? It wasn't on the fire. Is it a cliche? Likely it's a cliche. The only argument to make that it's not a cliche is that chances are that your wife did not dip the bowl into the pot and scoop out the soup, right? Then it would certainly be a cliche. Chances are there was some in-between step over here, namely the ladle. The ladle brought it out of the clearition and put it into the bowl. If you give its own status, the ladle its own status, so then the ladle is the cliche. The bowl is the cliche. If you don't give the ladle its own status, the ladle is a continuation, if you will, of the cliche. And now the bowl is a cliche. So how are we going to judge? How are we going to judge the ladle? So in fact, it seems to be a stira in the Mishra Take a look at the Mishra in Sivkot and Memhe. Says the Mishra in Sivkot and Memhe. You don't put bread in the morok of the chalun, the liquid of the chalun. like we saw before. Even if a person waits, <laughs> Like we said, some people do. Pour to cut some bread into the clay. It's not good what they do. Even if you don't put the pass, you put the pass once it's already poured. It's a cliche, and therefore you can't put the pass, you can't put the bread into the soup because it's a cliche. What should you do if you want to put pass in? There you have it. The Shabruah says, what do you do if you want to dip your challah into the soup? So you have two options. You can wait till the soup's cold. Okay, Gravaldic, right? But, <laughs> no, you can wait till it's not Yatzelet anymore. Fine, but you got to stick there. You got to figure it out. Then you start fighting whether it's Yatzelet or not. Right, you can put your hand there. You can't put your hand there. But you don't have a thermometer on Shabbos to measure it. So that, that's one way. Wait till it's not Yatzelet Or says the Mishra Brew, another Eitza. I take it out with a, instead of pouring it from the pot, I take it out with a ladle. I take it out with a ladle. That makes the ball a klishlishi. Once it's a klishlishi, yesh ama lismo. But now take a look at the Mishabura and Sivkot and Pezayin. It says the Mishabura. The cliche ni. Says the Mishabura, cliche ni mikri kishe iro min klirisho. When you pour it from a klirisho, she her ticho achame besoicho from that kli that was on the fire, the soich lize. Umutra afilu in my yatzel as well. Avalim shoye the klireka mi toy klirisho. Yesh oimrim didino ki klirisho. Ubi prada misha klireka besoicha chamala resaka vada me klirisho. Says the Mishabura, but don't think that a ladle gets you out of the problem because 
when you go with a kli and you draw out of the pot the kli rishon, yesh ayrim, that that kli, that ladle gets the status of a kli rishon. So the Mishabru is going back and forth. Does the ladle have a status of bifne atma of kli sheni? Or does the ladle have a status of the kli rishon? Tremendous, tremendous nafkamina. Could I dip my chala in my soup? We already said yesh bisha achrafiya. I want to dip it in my soup. If my soup's in a kli sheni, I certainly can. If it's in a kli shishi, at least yesh amalismaich. I could be saimech on Ramosha together with the tzira of that. There are rishonim that say bishal and afi are the same thing. So am I allowed to do it? So the mishabura seems to go back and forth. Not exactly clear. The consensus of the Paiskim seems to be similar to what the Mishabura himself ends off, and that is, it depends. It depends if the ladle has been sitting in the Klerishan, then it adopts the status of the Klerishan itself, and therefore it gets the status of a Klerishan because it's been sitting there, it's been heated by the heat of the Klerishan, and you can't, catch, you can't keep it, at, you can't count it as a separate Clean. However, if your wife is makbid when she's not pouring out soup in between, passing over the bowl, she's not putting the ladle back into the pot, but she's putting it on the side, not into the pot. So then there's a lot more to be soimichan. You could consider the cliche, the ladle to be a cliche. Then the ladle goes into the bowl. Your bowl is a cliche. Then dipping the challah in is not a problem, at least according to most posts, because it is a cliche. Before we end, I just want to take uh, a, I, I hate to cancel Shir on Hanukkah. Are people going to be available tomorrow, the next week, Sunday morning, or is it a Rachel of Atala? Available. Raise a hand. Who's going to be around? Okay, we'll have Shir Mitzvah Shem. I don't think so. The Pisces don't make. They're assuming it's metal. The plastic probably contains the heat. Oh, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. Play some dope on that. Plastic is light. Would be less of a problem. Right. I don't think it's enough of a leather problem that if it's staying in, you can make it. If it's not staying in, you can make it by it. What's the problem? Bumbus. First of all, how do we understand the whole only because it already gave, it, gave us the whole time of that bishop. But, but, but the whole run this so it's more of that same time. Okay, so then according to Rav Yah, what if the Yesh Bishlach Bishlach double lach, the Stanek, the Stanek, you can say the same logic. Which way are you going? In other words, according to Rav Yah, if it's the Stanek, what does he hold? Yesh Bishlach 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 because it's the same flavor. It could be he holds official by double lock. It's different. I don't know. I'd have to look up. I don't want to take sides. I think you could explain it either way. I hear why you're saying that, but it could be he holds that by double lock. It's different. Oh, 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 oh,